Hey everyone, welcome back to the outpost. As you can see, I've been whittling on this little dish uh, that I started, I don't know, a week or so ago. Someone did write to me and tell me, instead of doing a cross cut like this, trying to whittle it out, if I split it and then took a thin section and went with the grain to try to cut it out, it would work a whole lot better. So this has been really tough to try to get that thing whittle down but I managed to make uh, some headway on it. Actually it's turning out okay. It's a little dish you know that I could use for something. I've been trying to get the bottom flat right here where I didn't have any raised edges. This little uh, bushcraft bench what I had done was I drilled uh, four vertical holes and I put those uh, stops in there like this and then I just took these wedges and of course it's kind of round you just tighten these wedges up like this and that holds that in there secure where you can actually go frontwards and backwards uh, on this and it holds it in there fairly well so um, yeah just some way to give me a little bit of a handle on this other than just using my hand you know I've had some questions on uh, the tractor from time to time I was thinking about that and I thought that um, I would stop here in just a second and try to answer some of those questions. Let's walk over there and take a look at the tractor and I'll explain to you what I'm talking about. 
This tractor is a Kubota L3901. It's got a LA525 loader on the front end which is rated for uh, if I remember correctly 1100 pounds. I also did a video back I think it was number four uh, last year the, the fourth video that I ever put up on this tractor. You can go back and reference that on everything that I've done but I'm just gonna kinda uh, hit some highlights today and show you some of the modifications that I've made. These hooks right here have been invaluable for me to be able to hook chains to and the straps that you see me hauling the logs with all the time. You've probably also had seen the extension that I had put on the front here when I was putting the posts and beams together. I also did a video on that and I went back and I cut this steel off because I had it spot welded in here and I thought well instead of cutting those welds off what I would do is leave this on here and I'd be able to use it at a later time. That really came in handy to be able to lift things that uh, were way up out of reach so I thought I would go ahead and leave that on there too because I could possibly use that at a later date. People have also asked me what is this PVC? Well basically it's just a hole. Okay. Uh, this is run up in there about two inches. This was a hole which was part of the frame for this bucket um, which is just something for them to weld to to attach this and I thought well that's just unused space. It's about 14 inches deep. So when I'm not using the chains or have the box blade on the back, I'll stuff those chains up in here and then I can put the cap on right here and screw it on. And I've always got chains with me. That way they're not flopping around and dangling on the back. Another addition that I had made was on this chainsaw, I had taken one of these covers and I mounted it right here. Right here is the top of it, as you can see that fits down in there so I can actually take my saw and stick it down in here like this and it will ride there and I can always have a saw with me when I'm out and about because you never know when you're going to need one and it's protected it won't go anywhere since the body is built to where the bar is on the right hand side it's out of my way I don't uh, you know I don't bump it with my elbows or anything and then if I need it, I can just always go right here, pull it out, and then I've got my saw handy to be able to use for whatever I need. Okay, one other modification that I had made was, is in order to be able to lift on the front, you need some sort of counterbalance. This box blade back here probably weighs, I don't know, five or 600 pounds, and it's a good counterbalance to uh, a load on the front. But I also seen the need where I need the trailer a whole lot. You've seen me moving the trailer around, loading wood on it and what have you. I would always have to take the box blade off to have this hitch right here uh, up there on the tractor to be able to back up and hook up to the trailer. And then if the bucket couldn't lift the log uh, out of the woods to get it up here, this boom with the lift on the back, I thought, well, maybe I can back up to it, hook to it, and drag it up here. You know, there's a lot of times that um, I use this lift back here instead of the uh, boom on the front. So I thought, you know, is there a way that I could possibly combine these three things? And so I had an extra draw bar from the old tractor that I used to have. This is the one that levels the box up, you know, forward and tilts it forward and backward. And then, of course, the arms on the tractor, you know, will move it from side to side. So what I thought, since it had an extra hole down in here, I thought if there was any way that I could just sit this up on top and either weld it down here and uh, put this draw bar on it, uh, because this had three holes in it right here, I might possibly be able to use this boom without having to take the box off. So what we did was, is my good neighbor up there, we took two pieces of metal, we actually welded them to the box blade. And we put the pins in them just like they would hook up to the tractor. So this thing is not permanently attached. I can actually take this pin out right here, those two down there, and it will come off. And so then the other thing, that, like I said, was being able to hook up to the trailer. So what I did was, is, uh, or what we did is we welded a little piece of four inch steel down there to the box blade, drilled a hole in it where we could actually put this pin in here and be able to take that off right there. And then I drilled a hole up here and these were the two stabilizer bars that came off of the old tractor also. Drilled two holes in those, put another pin in right here, 
that I can actually take out. And what that does is this metal on the box blade is not real, real thick. And if I got a really heavy load, you could actually see the metal move a little bit. So by putting this stabilizer on here, if I pick up and have a heavy load, then it pulls down on this, which pulls down on the whole box blade, which again goes to the draw bars and then to the tractor. So that stabilized everything. But that way I have got my uh, ball on there. It doesn't get in the way of me grading because it's up off of the ground a little bit. Um, I have got the boom pole on here, which adds a couple extra hundred pounds of counterweight also. And it's accessible. It's ready to go at any time. And I've also got the box blade, which I can use, like I say, and the counterweight that it provides. So those are a few of the modifications that I did to the tractor to suit the needs that I have here at the outpost. Some other questions I've had have been about this mallet. You know, um, dogwood is a hard wood just like this maple. And you've probably seen me use this many times. Actually, I had made one with a head where I put a handle in it and the handle didn't last long. This was carved out of one solid piece. I did a video on how to make a wooden mallet and I think it was some upgrades that I had done to the sawmill last year. Um, you can go and check that video out. Uh, you can see a little bit of wear. But for the most part, um, this has been a really good mallet. I don't know if you've got any dogwood in your area. Any type of hardwood, uh, hickory, oak, maple, would probably all do the same thing. Um, what I did was I actually took a stick, a little bit bigger around than this, and I took my saw and I scored it, and then I started splitting it down the side right here. Now you can see this handle has started checking a little bit, but that doesn't affect it any. And when I split it down here and then I uh, broke those pieces off and I whittled it down a little bit to make it smooth. But I mean, it's nothing fancy, but I have used this and I have really beat the tar out of it. And that's all the wear that you can see. So I've had a few questions on that. Thought I would um, go ahead and answer that. I've also had some uh, comments on the oil or what I was going to use for the post and beam and when I went to look for uh, you know I had some people tell me that tongue oil was probably better than linseed oil and I actually found a product that had both of them in there you've probably seen me using that recently in a video so I'm gonna walk over here and show you the bucket actually that I was able to find at Lowe's so far um, I'm really pleased with that. I had uh, some comments uh, on a guy, I think it was, he called it Q8, uh, that he had um, got from a builder from Western North Carolina that did some cabin refinishing and uh, it really worked good on their logs. Um, one person wrote that um, they had stained a cabin 30 years ago and used a product called uh, Seekins or Sikens, uh, S-I-K-K-E-N-S. It's two or three uh, parts epoxy stain and the owner told me uh, that it has held up well over the years in Maine. So there is another product that is uh, good to be used for something like that. That was very expensive. It was $219 and I thought well for that price it, it has to be good, right? Well not necessarily but I thought I would try it and it seems to spread on farther than the linseed oil. It seems to uh, look really good when you put it on the oil and it's supposed to have the tongue oil and the linseed oil combined in it. And I got the natural look because I didn't want to change it any from what I had. So far I'm really happy with that uh, Australian product. You know, if you've got questions about the tools that I'm using here, basically what I've got, of course, is this wooden mallet. I've got a couple of straight chisels that are uh, made by Delahome uh, that I ordered off of Amazon. I've got this curved chisel, 
this knife right here, pull it out, and this spoon knife all came from a kit, these three right here, came from a kit that I ordered from Beavercraft and so far you know it's not a really expensive set but so far I'm pleased with it uh, it seems to do the job that I need it to do and uh, I do need to however sharpen the factory edge on this isn't the greatest so I do need to sharpen this one right here but the factory edge on this spoon knife uh, was pretty good so I mean, not to say that I, I don't need to sharpen it, but it was pretty good. But this needed a little bit of touch up. I have another smaller spoon knife right here. I have a boring tool that you can use for bushcraft, which you just basically whittle out um, a stick that will go through there like this. And now you have yourself a T-handle that you can actually turn and use to be able to bore holes if you're out in the bush. So what I may do, since that goes in there pretty tight, I may throw one of those in my kit just to keep that in there. But I also use this right here to protect that blade. You've seen me probably use this before. Um, this is a hone steel stone and I've had this probably since I was 17 years old and um, I, it's used for hunting. You can split bone with it right here, but you can also uh, sharpen your knife because this is stainless. Then I've got a couple of other, now these were straight blades. These right here are actually curved. It's kind of concave right there. Um, you can use those for uh, whittling and so forth, but these are these are the primary ones that uh, I've been using. Now sometimes in order to cut down on the weight I will take some of these out if I don't plan on using them and I will just take what I think that I need. I've also got this uh, axe that you've probably seen me make the um, video on this and this is a tomahawk style where I've got a a handle that I go up that goes up in here and I can use that you know I just kind of keep that in here just in case that I, I need it uh, but anyway those are the tools that I've been using before you put your insulation on the floor check out the boss of the swamp video on bubble foil it works good for him I've never used it so decide for yourself it does look like it works pretty good so I had actually seen that uh, used um, elsewhere you know what that does is it creates a reflection so you put that down it's a real thin foil and I'm thinking about when I put my subfloor down going ahead and doing that uh, because whatever heat it will be reflected back up into the house and uh, I don't think it costs that much and you know it makes sense and I think it's a good idea so yeah I think that I will probably do that when I get ready to do the floor I've also had some other comments about you know getting the fireplace prepared I still haven't made up my mind on what kind of fireplace that I'm going to do but I am going to have to do some sort of foundation I just don't know how deep and thick that I'm going to do it because I haven't decided what kind of weight that it's going to have to carry and that will all dictate you know how deep I actually make that footer so here's what I've got so far let me turn the camera. I don't know if you can see that with the sun shining on it or not. But I've kind of got that pretty much leveled out there in the bottom. And these sides right here, I've got them down about the same all the way around. I think what I'm going to do is take me a piece of sandpaper now and run around that. And that should be a decent little bowl for me to uh, either use up here at the outpost or take with me camping. You know, I've said it many times, we really do appreciate each and every one of you subscribers out there and uh, the support that you give us. Be sure and go check out our store, um, all the things that my son's working hard there to um, have available, you know, for the outpost community. If uh, they see some things that they like there, outdoor wear and gear and stuff like that, there's some links to Amazon down in the description on tools and things that um, 
we use up here if you're interested in anything like that. And, you know, we just want to thank you. And one more thing before I leave is, you know, I actually had a comment. Uh, somebody uh, had went back and was watching some of the older videos and realized that um, I think it is the 21st that will be our first year on YouTube. You know, we really had no idea that this channel would even uh, do what it did. Um, and it's only because of you guys as subscribers that it's at where it's at and because of all of your support. And uh, this person said that they wanted a special done, but there's no way that we can do a special. But what we could do, and of course I've never done one, and my son said that he would help me, but that is to do a live stream. And so I wanted to kind of give you guys a head up, or, or a heads up, that um, on... Saturday, I think it is May the 2nd uh, at 7 p.m. That way to give you time to eat supper and sit down and and we can have a, a little bit of a live stream and with the Outpost community and anybody else that wants to tune in and I was talking to my son um, You know possibly we can use a remote connection and get him involved in there too uh, because he does live uh, in Texas and uh, also uh, You know that would give you enough time if you wanted to sit down in the evening and watch a movie before you went to bed. Uh, you could do that as well. So, you know, when we first started this channel, it was primarily designed to uh, film this process up here so that I could have it as a reference and also to build a bush camp down there where I could invite people to come over and have do their skills and we could uh, upload it to YouTube and people would have access to that. But it has turned into something totally different. It's, we had no idea any of this would ever happen. And, you know, we don't know what to say other than thank you so much for your support in such a fantastic first year. We've got a lot of things planned for this year, and we think that you all are going to be excited about it. We want to, like I said, we want to put out what you guys want to watch. And uh, that's the reason that we're doing these giveaways is because, you know, we appreciate everybody's support in this channel and as far as I know there's nobody else on YouTube that's doing that you know you might see a giveaway here and there but we're doing giveaways every month and that's because we appreciate you guys um, supporting us in what we're doing here that's our form of advertising it's it's a give back to you all because of your um, generous support and um, everything that you're doing for us and all the great comments you know that you guys and and all of the you know there's a lot of love coming back uh, to this channel from from people out there and so we want to thank you guys each and every one of you by doing a live stream video May the 2nd Saturday night at 7 p.m. and you know hopefully I've never done one like I say but hopefully it'll go over well and we can create some excitement out there and um, share with the Outpost community. And hopefully, like I said, we get my son on there. And, and we can all have a good time for a little while uh, on May the 2nd. So you all be looking for that. So guys, hope you enjoyed this little session on um, modifying this bushcraft uh, workbench some. Or a sawhorse, I guess. You know, again, all I did was drill some vertical holes. I put some pegs in here. You need a couple of wedges. And you can take your material, you can wedge it in there, and you can use it to um, do other things besides just use it as a shave horse. Or I say a shave horse, it's something to shave material down. A shave horse I do need to make, so that'll be another video coming up. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the, the little portion on the tools that I use here uh, for whittling out and everything. Hope everyone has a great afternoon. Take care, and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the outpost in the future.